Hoi there, my name's Beth, and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. This week, can you guess? More wiring. So, a bit more cable. Right, let's get cracking. So this time last week we'd got to this point. So we'd got the uh, the cable laid for this socket. And if you remember, the, uh, I was doing loops. On every dropper there was a loop, so it went down and went back up again. Um, but this one, we ran out of cable a bit further along. So I cut it back to this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this, this end and I'm gonna join this one up and then I'm gonna keep going down the boat. Now the rest of this run I'm going to take a, a fair bit down the side of the boat because um, this is, these are the sockets um, we've been laying out for the last, uh, last week. Uh, these are the sockets, the domestic sockets for around the boat. So that's the kind of things that you want to plug in and, and, uh, and, and unplug. Uh, I don't know, things like hair dryers or that kind of thing. But we're going to run another cable into the kitchen for the kitchen sockets because the kitchen appliances are going to need a little bit more um, power. Uh, potentially, so we're just going to split that circuit. But um, anyway, so we're going to take this bit further back. Then we're going to lay the loop for the under uh, under sofa um, socket. So I'm going to put a little socket in there, and then we'll uh, connect them up again at the other end. decided to do instead of just having this this um, cable running here and down here I'm going to put an extra loop on here for an extra socket and the reason why that is I'm going to put a socket in the front of the sofa just here but I'm going to put another one in the front of that sofa because there's not going to be any sockets on this side of the kitchen that's where the sink is uh, there is going to be a cable for the the washer dryer but there's not going to be any sockets and you never know I might need one at this side so um so I'm going to put a dropper in for that um, but just to keep it simple, I'm just going to have one cable around the back of the kitchen where most of the sockets will be, and that's where the, the coffee machine and, uh, and the blender or whatever I'm going to use will be. So yeah, I'm going to put a loop in here.
So now the two the two ends of the cable are back together again. And um, and okay, there's a break that we when we put the new piece of cable in, but as soon as that's wired into a socket, there'll be a, a continuous ring all the way around the boat. And that's because it is a ring circuit. Um, those of you not in the UK might not use ring circuits, but they're quite popular in the UK. And essentially what it means is that there are the connectors are connected into the, to the consumer unit, to the power, and they loop all the way around the boat, but the connectors from both sides are connected together and into the consumer unit. So that means the live, live, same one, the uh, neutral, neutral, same, and the earth, earth, same. That's a ring circuit. And there's another type of circuit. If I was to just get rid of one piece and wire in this end to the, dis to the consumer unit, then um, this end might have a socket on or something. That will be called a radial circuit. And they're slightly more popular now. Uh, ring circuits have a bit of a history. Um, they initially were designed to um, to save cable, uh, you know, after the war, uh, because people would, from the distribution uh, point, from the distribution panel, fuse box, I guess, they would write a light, you know, kind of wire up one socket, and then another socket, and another socket, and another socket, and obviously that took a load of cable. So these ring circuits were designed, so there was a starting point, there's loads of sockets, and then a ring at the end. Now, um, some people don't like them um, because the um, one of the benefits of, of ring circuits, without getting too much into them, is that they can carry more current than the cable is rated for, um, because the current the cable effectively is shared twice. It's a bit complicated, but it doesn't really matter. Um, so, but if that if the cable breaks in the middle, then you could have more current going through the cable than it's rated for, and that that means it'll heat up. And uh, I don't want it heating up here because it could burst into flames. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a circuit because I'm going to do a ring circuit <clears throat> because that's a good way of distributing power um, around the, um, the, the boat. Um, but also I'm going to have a circuit breaker which is rated for this cable anyway. So there'll never be too many amps running through the cable than the cable can handle uh, because the breaker will trip and it'll protect the cable. So um, so yeah, I know some of you might not like ring circuits. I hummed and hard, I wasn't sure, um, but you know, if, if the worst comes to the worst, I can um, stop the, the circuit at some point and make two radial circuits down each side. Um, and that's what these will be. So, um, so the cable's in there and uh, I've got a few options. But yeah, certainly at the moment there's a ring circuit. Um, and then we're going to run a radial circuit in for the kitchen sockets. That's the next cable. Um, and then we're going to run a radial circuit for the washer dryer. Now that's just one single cable running from the distribution box to the, um, the washer dryer. Um, but even one connection, one cable, strictly speaking, is a radial circuit. So, um, so yeah, without getting too much into it. And um, last week, uh, when I was recording this, I uh, rambled on for 15 minutes, and nobody needs to have that amount of rambling. Nobody. Well, I've um, I've got half the cable installed, um, and I've run out of the little saddles, these things, and um, the screws that I need. They're uh, ten mil screws, so um, and it's now twenty past three. So I've already been to uh, to B and Q once today. And uh, and I don't I don't want to go again. So I think we we'll just go in the morning and uh, and um, so we'll leave this for now. Um, so we're kind of nearly there. Um, I'm going to cut this cable off reasonably short. So I mean it's going to come to here and a bit longer, because I only need to wire it into one socket, and the next socket will be wired from that socket. So I don't need the full length. And uh, not really like the uh, the run that we've just put around the boat. So um so yeah so I'm going to I'm going to cut this off and then um might do another job um and uh call it a day I think um 
so yeah, just uh, I'm trying to scatter these kind of pieces of information uh, through the through the uh, through the videos. But um, so this this cable is um, is rated to 27 amps. And somebody asked me actually um, a little while ago. Um, I mentioned uh, 16 amps and 32 amps for the shore supply, and um, and I didn't really explain what I meant. Um, but uh, but again, not to get too deep into it, there's tons of videos if you want to learn more, but um, essentially, uh, you know, there is uh, there are volts and there are amps in uh, a power in, in um, power supply. Um, the volts, if you like, are, um, are the, um, if you think of it as a, a system of water, a um, system of water pipes, that's a kind of easy, easy way of looking at it. Um, so the volts, if you like, are how much the, pa the, the tap is turned on. So how much, uh, how much water or how much, uh, electricity is flowing through a system. So the more you turn a tap on, the more volts you have. So we've got 24 volts, the tap's not very, not on very much, and 240 volts, the tap is on much more. Um, now also there's a slight difference, this is direct current and this is alternating current, but we'll, we'll kind of leave that for now. Um, but the amps are, are reasonably important because if you think about it in the system, the, again the volts, the tap being turned on, the, al the amps are like the size of the pipe so if you think about in a in a house, you know, when, when you might be in the shower and someone turns the kitchen tap on and it goes freezing cold because the water pressure drops. Um, if you had really big beefy pipes and, uh, and a load of water coming in, then that wouldn't happen so much because um, the system could deal with, you know, more than one tap turned on at once. And it's exactly the same with this. Uh, with a 240 volt system, um, what I, uh, I have is um, a certain amount of a certain number of amps that I can put through the system. So every appliance needs some amps. Um, so the washer dryer, the coffee machine, all of those kind of things. And the more things you turn on, the more the more um, current these things require. Um, so if you get to um, what 16 amps in my current supply, which is almost like running a tumble dryer and a coffee machine and a TV all together. Now, if I then put on a uh, an old style five bar fire, um, the the if I drew more than 16 amps, then the probably the bollard uh, breaker would break the fuse, if you like, um, because I'm trying to draw too much current. Which is that so that's why it's good to have 32 amps because you've got much more headroom. So so yeah, um, that's a that's a kind of not very good. Um, description of how it works but um but that's why um i've got uh, i've got the um designing these um circuits to all um be able to supply up to 20 amps um and then i'll have a 20 amp breaker on each of the circuits um and the cable is rated to 27 amps so i'm not going to go over that um so i'm not going to not going to draw too much out of the out the cable and cause any problems that way so um so yeah there'll be a breaker on each one um i'm separating the circuits because uh, each circuit then can take, um, you know, can take a chunk of the power, um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of that's that's what that's about. Morning. So last night was an absolutely torrential rain. Torrential. Um, it actually woke me up about three in the morning. And it went on till about five, I think. Um, it wasn't unpleasant to be woken up by it in some ways, but it was just so heavy and for such a long period of time. So I'm hoping there's not going to be uh, flooding for people. But um, anyway, so uh, we're going to crack on today and uh, we need some more bits. So, uh, so the first thing to do is to head to B&Q. So let's head to B&Q for some bits.
Thank you. Thank you. So I've just finished off these cables. Um, so if you remember one of those, if I hold it underneath, this one is the ring that goes around the boat. And this one is the radial circuit that comes to the kitchen sockets. So there is a tail on the end of this now, uh, which I'm just going to leave. I've just cable tied it to keep it out of the way. But that's going to run this way, uh, or this way, um, alongside the um, the wall of the uh, of the kitchen. So there's going to be a few sockets in the in the kitchen wall, um, and uh, or kitchen bulkhead, I suppose you should, I should say. Uh, but there's going to be a few sockets in there, and this will run from this uh, this circuit. Um, and then, if you remember, the um, ring circuit um, has those droppers, and on those droppers, we will put the other sockets. Um, and uh, that means that the sockets um, for the rest of the rest of the boat use uh, will uh, will come from there. Um, so this one, uh, these two actually are in the um, in the twin cabin. Um, so that'll be the two socket kind of double sockets in there. So uh, so yeah, I think uh, I think it's uh, it's quite a good job. Um, if I need to, as an aside, if I need to put another socket in the um, in the twin cabin or another couple of sockets, which I might well do. I don't need to extend the ring there. I can use what's called a spur. So it means that from that socket, I can have another single cable to another socket, a little bit like a radial circuit off the ring circuit. Um, so I might do that actually, uh, to put another couple of sockets in the um, in the twin cabin, um, because I want there to be enough sockets for people uh, to charge the phones and all that kind of stuff. But also that's gonna be my office as well. So I've got tons of things to plug into, you know, computer and monitor and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah. Um, so we've got a uh, 24 volt, uh, 20, 20, 240 volt ring and uh, 240 volt radial. And uh, yeah, again, this is the uh, the cooker ignition. So uh, just to find your way around the boat. So, um, so yeah, I think um, I'm gonna wire on a couple of sockets now, I think, and uh, and then uh, we can um, at some point wire in the, um, the ring into the new um, consumer unit um, and then start using that. But um, yeah, I think, uh, I might put a socket on the end of this uh, this tail, um, you know, the double one, um, and that kind of makes that uh, that loop again. So, um, so yeah, let's do that. So you can see now this this cable uh, comes down and into here so that's the uh, neutral of the earth and then the live so the cape this cable this side of the ring goes into there and then it keeps going the other side and the same for the earth and the same for the live so uh, what we've done is we've made a, an entire loop so we can go and check the continuity on the two ends up on the other end So now I've got um, I've got two pieces of cable, or at least um, the ring, um, and this one, this side of the cable goes down this way. So if you remember, that's the one we put in there last week. And then the cable comes back. These two are the other radial circuits. So one of them is the sockets, and one of them is the washer dryer. But this one is the return for the ring. So that is two ends of one ring. So it's a big loop that goes all the way around the boat and back here. But what I need to do is I need to make sure that it is in fact a loop. So if I test the continuity between the earth here and the earth there, I, it should be continuous, it should be a circuit. If I don't get a circuit, that means there's a break in it somehow. Um, remember, we just wired up that socket, so there shouldn't be a break. So what I've got is, I've got a, um, I've got my multimeter and uh, I've got it on a continuity tester. So effectively, when I put them two together, it makes a sound. So if I hold this one on the, the earth of this cable, and then touch the earth of this cable, all being well, yeah. So that means the earth is all the way through. Let's test the 
There you go, the neutral. Neutral's okay. And let's try the live. Live's okay as well. So it means I can then wire this into the distribution unit and I've got a single ring around the boat. So we've nearly finished the wiring and a few more sockets and that should be usable. So just a few thank yous. Um, thank you to Jackie. I apologise last week I wasn't sure what your name was and it's Jackie and Jackie bought me a copy from the link below. Thank you so much, it's really generous. Also thanks to my neighbour up the river Lottie um, and she also bought me a copy and, uh, and yeah, I hope to catch up sometime and best of luck with your boat. And um, yeah, also thanks to someone so someone also bought me a copy this week from that link underneath the, in the description. Um, and thank you so much. Thank you for, for all of your huge generosity. It's really, really amazing. And, uh, and thank you all for watching and sharing your kind comments with me. And uh, I'm really glad that you're on this journey with me. And, uh, and I'm really, really pleased to be making these videos and, uh, and love to hear your comments. So um, thanks again and I uh, hope you stay safe this week. Next week is a little special video of a day in the life aboard a renovation so um so i hope you enjoy that and uh, then the week after we'll crack on with the jobs stay safe and i'll see you next time